very much. Um, I just want to take a minute to thank Mr. Rajiv Gupta and the I3 Foundation for organizing such a wonderful event. And I think this should be an inspiration to all the other states of India to organize a similar event to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the conquest of Mount Everest. And um, the two humble, simple human beings achieved one of the greatest, um, one of the greatest feats in human history. Besides reaching the moon, they reached the summit of Mount Everest. But they climbed this mountain as simple human beings. They reached the summit, came back as heroes, worshipped by millions of people, and inspired millions of people to do the unachievable. But they continue to live the lives of simple human beings and they continue to give back to the society and the people of the Himalayas. That's a true gentleman. Today I'm not going to talk about myself, but I'm going to talk about my father, Nancy Norgia Sherpa. Most of you read about him in school, some of you probably read about him in school, but now uh, who is Tenzing Norgia? He's not the man who climbed Everest. There's a lot more to this man than the first man to climb Everest. He was a very strict, disciplined father and a great family man. He was born, a lot of you don't know about his history, he was born in Tibet, in the village of Partha, which is on the east face of Mount Everest, on the Ansam face of Everest, the village. So, his parents moved from Kharta Valley, across the Himalayan Pass, into the village of Thame, right across into Nepal. And they lived in the village of Thame, and he moved there when he was just about six years old. And back then they were all farmers, they farmed and herded yaks throughout the Himalayas. And in our custom, we usually send one of our children, you know, to be a monk, to do God's work in one of the monasteries. So his parents wanted to send him to the monastery, to the Thame monastery. So they took him to the monastery and uh, asked, you know, the head abbot to accept him. But before doing that, the abbot said that I need to do a divination before I take your son in. And my father's birth name was not Tenzing Norge. His name was Namgyal Wangdi. And when the head monk did the divination, he said that I cannot accept your son in the monastery because he is an incarnation of a very wealthy man and reincarnation of a very very wealthy man in Tibet and he is destined to do great things and I also need to change his name to Tenzing Norgay that's when he got his first name Tenzing Norgay at the small at the young age so he went back to the village and herded the yaks and looking you know, grazing the yaks all day herding the yaks he looked at Mount Everest all the time saying to himself, what is this mountain that is so high that no birds can fly over? And the curiosity got to him all the time on this mountain. And at the young age of 18, he decided to run away from his home to Darjeeling, because Nepal was closed to the outside world until then. And all the expeditions to Everest and other Himalayan peaks started from Darjeeling. So he heard about the British expeditions coming to Darjeeling to hire Sherpas, so he went to Darjeeling to look for a job. And he first got hired in 1935 by Eric Shipton. And there's a great photograph of him waiting in line with the shorts, khaki pants, you know, half vest, waiting in line in front of the British Sahibs. And remember, this was uh, during the British years before 1947. This is 1935. And uh, the Eric Shipton refused to hire him, but he refused to move from the spot. And then later on, Eric Shipton felt something that you know, connection with him and said, all right, I'm going to hire this gentleman. There's something peculiar about this man. And on that expedition, they went from the from Darjeeling across the Tibetan, you know, into Tibet and uh, went on the north side of Everest and they got about almost about 27,000 feet. And that was the highest my father ever got at the first attempt. And then they realized, the Sherpas and the British Sahibs realized that this man is extraordinary. He was extraordinary. He carried double the loads than all of any other Sherpas and he walked double the fast time than anyone else. He had super power, superhuman power at that time. 
So he went on, subsequently he went on many other expeditions on Everest in 1936 with Tillman and then um, Shipley he went on and ultimately he went on six expeditions to Mount Everest. In, in between, he had worked in the Garhwal Himalayas, he had walked all the way into Hindukush, the Hindukush mountains in Afghanistan. And back then he lived in Pakistan for almost a year, working under one uh, general over there, working for him, you know, uh, because that time Pakistan was part of India. And uh, so he worked there for many years, came back and continued to pursue his dream to climb this mountain. And he finally, on 1952, he got the opportunity to go with the Swiss as a member of the expedition. And he was the one and only Sherpa that climbed for joy. And at the same time, it paid him. He explored, he explored the Himalayas that nobody else has explored even today. He explored all the way from the Hindu Kush Himalayas, Pakistan, Garhwal, Nanga Parvat, one of the most dangerous mountains or known as the Killer Mountain in Pakistan today. He was on that expedition in 1937 where two Sherpas died and he had to rescue bringing back some of the Sherpas. He carried these people down the mountain back then. He had a passion to climb the mountain. There was something calling him, the mountains were calling him the whole time. And in 1952, when he went with the Swiss expedition to Mount Everest, he reached 400 meters from the summit. He was right there, he can literally see the summit and he and his partner decided to turn back because they had some oxygen problem and if they wanted to, they would have made it to the top. No problem at all. But they decided to come back down. And that's one thing in life you need to remember. No matter how close you are to your goal, if you have some issues, make sure you turn back, regroup and then go back again. Because if my father and Lambert wanted to climb the mountain back then, they would have made it to the summit, but they probably would not have made it back alive. Making the right decision, knowing how to and when to turn around is very important, not only when climbing, but also in everyday work of life. Whether you work in a company, whether you're working with the CCL, whether you're working in school, doing examinations, make sure you know when to turn back. And then you can always go back stronger and better. And then finally, in 1953, he was joined, you know, he joined the British expedition and he made it to the summit with Edmund Hillary because they had great weather. And he was known by all the British expedition and all the people that he climbed as the Sherpa with the third lung. Because he performed miraculously and better than everyone else around the world. He was a man of simple and humble beginnings. Like I said earlier, he achieved you know, the greatest feat in the world, but not without hard work and difficulty. He had this passion and the vision to climb this mountain, and over a period of 18 years and six attempts, he still did not give up. He stayed focused on his goal to climb this mountain. And he made it with the British expedition in 1953, and all they needed was good luck, and he was there with an excellent man, Edmund Hillary. And you can imagine two human beings sleeping at 28,000 feet, 28,500 feet. That's about the main balcony. We don't sleep there anymore nowadays. But back then they had one last camp up there, camp number nine. Now imagine two tall, thin gentlemen sleeping at this altitude one night just by themselves. And the wind is howling, tents are fluttering. Temperature is about minus 30 degrees curled up in a small ledge and not talking to each other because Hillary did not speak any Nepali or Hindi and my father hardly spoke any English. How were these two people communicating back then? No. And it just goes to show you that no matter what background you're from, no matter what ethnic background you're from, what geographic location you're from, it doesn't matter as long as you have the same vision and the passion work together as a team, you can accomplish anything. And that was proven by these two gentlemen 70 years ago today. This is one of the most important lessons we need to take today. As the younger generation, for us and for the younger generation watching here to, uh, this morning, remember this. Remember these two gentlemen, the hardships they went and the decisions they made. That is important to remember and that is what I wish 
that you take away from this. And I know that each and every one of you have your own average to climb. Whether it's Mount Everest, whether it's getting an A in chemistry or biology or becoming a doctor or lawyer, you have your own vision. Follow your passion. Make sure you are happy doing what you do. You have to enjoy what you do. If your parents want you, you to be a doctor and you don't want to be a doctor, don't be a doctor. Go and do something you enjoy. That is important because if you are being a doctor and you don't enjoy the work, you're going to kill somebody. So that is not good. <laughs> if you're a lawyer and you, know, and you don't want to be a lawyer, you're going to lose a lot of cases. So don't do something you are not interested in. Make sure you enjoy what you do in life. If you are out in the mountains, enjoy the mountains. Make sure you are not doing it because of ego, because you want to take a selfie up there. And that's what's happening in the mountaineering community today. Lots of selfies going on. Lots of overnight mountaineers we have climbing, climbing these mountains. Go with the right passion and the desire to achieve your goals. That is one of the most important things you should learn. And I know we have uh, many other mountaineers here who are going to share their stories of hardships, difficulties and triumphs. But it all comes at a price, which, means, which is to work hard. And I'd like to leave you with something my father always told me. <clears throat> he said, be a leader, be a guide. Guide your team and accomplish your goals despite the hardships. But he said, above all, be great, make others great. That is the most important thing. Thank you very much.